Fabrizio is one of the top uh, macroeconomists of his generation, and his work reflects higher originality and high productivity in many areas. This is why he has earned so many awards. The work that he's going to present today is his work on China. It's a common view that China has grown, yes, but that this growth has gone at the uh, advantage of a smaller share of its population. Uh, in this statement, there is uh, s some little truth and a lot of uh, uh, misperception. The effect of growth has been so uh, predominant that poverty has uh, been largely eradicated. Now, the 1990s was the decade where most of the uh, fundamental reform took place. The large technological backwardness and uh, uh, the isolation from uh, international trade and the fact that in 1970s there were essentially no foreign direct investments. The goal of this policy was explicitly to attract foreign investment and to foster economic development. There was also this element that was so characteristic of the uh, Chinese policymaker strategy, which is to go uh, by experimentation. We can see that already before the reform, these cities were doing slightly better, but not much. And then there is a very reasonable build-up effect, uh, which in the end uh, flattens. So we can also learn something about the channel of this uh, policy, uh, and these the channels are uh, you know, more uh, foreign uh, uh, investment, more investment from domestic firms, so there is a strong effect on capital accumulation. There is also some effect on human capital, though not major, in the, in the, qu the quality of the composition of the population in this area improves relative to the rest, and there are some effects on productivity. So next, I want to talk about uh, the, uh, growing like, like China, the, the study that uh, I did together with Shadow uh, Stores Latin and uh, Song Zheng. There are a number of uh, uh, strong uh, macroeconomic irregularities, uh, which are the fact that uh, the, the, the rate of return to investment was very high and remained high without any tendency to uh, decline over time. So one would expect uh, altogether China to be uh, attracting uh, uh, capital. Instead, it has turned out to be, uh, by and large, an exporter. So we start from the macroeconomic identity by which the gap between export and import is uh, uh, equal to the difference between savings and investment. So uh, the, the, the foreign surplus, the trade surplus, can be viewed as an excess of savings over the investment. Here the question is, well, if there, was, uh, there were so much savings, why wouldn't they uh, fuel even more investment given the high rate of return? And the explanation uh, that we pro provide is related to the fact that the banking system in China works in a very distorted way. Largely, partly because uh, it is largely owned by the, the state, and there is a, uh, so these are the, the, the four largest bank are, are state-owned banks, and there is a strong entrenchment between this bank and the system of state-owned enterprises. The banking system altogether fails to, cha to channel the growing savings of uh, families to private enterprises, and specifically to those enterprises that happen to be the most uh, uh, dynamic and the most productive. Now I want to discuss uh, in, the, in the last part of my talk something that concerns the future. We argue that it's unlikely to see that uh, China will actually, uh, will actually collapse. We also see a transition from investment driven to innovation growth. We expect a growing role of the internal demand uh, and an acceleration of, uh, of wages. We think that financial market reforms uh, uh, are important and uh, uh, should have a key role in the, in the policy reform agenda. And finally, that uh, 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 instrument of redistribution uh, that uh, redistribute the, the benefit of this high growth across the population are important for sustainability. Mm -hmm.